saved, good to know who Jesus is. Let's all sing tonight. 329, sing it real, real big, real loud. You know the, you know the words. Standing on God's promise. Hey, ready? Hey, now standing on the promises. Christ my King, through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Everybody sing out now. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Good. Amen. Alright, let's sing it out. Number two, ready? Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. By the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Help me sing. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. On the third, turn it up real big loud. Ready, stand. The promises I now can see. Perfect present cleansing in the blood for me. Standing in the liberty where Christ makes free. Standing on the promises of God. Everybody standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Amen. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. All right, crank it up now. Number four, ready? Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God. Sing it out. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. All right, let's get this last one now. Everybody, open your mouth. Let's sing. Come on, real loud. Standing on the promises cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior. My all in all, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing the promises of God. All God people said. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good singing this evening. Uh, everybody find your seat. Get me up just a tad on this, sister. What a blessing it is to see all of you here tonight. A lot of folks still on the way this evening. I've had a uh, text and, and people are coming from hither and thither and far and near. Uh, we're really glad that you're here tonight. We're going to pray. Let's ask the Lord to bless get in this service here tonight. Got something real special for us tonight. And I hope you brought your Bible. If you didn't bring your Bible now, you're going to be in a mess here in a few minutes. Get your Bible. Bring your Bible to church because we're going to get into it tonight. We're going to study the Bible a lot in just a few minutes. Not not a long length of time, but a, a lot of study crammed into a short length of time. Um, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this evening. I thank you for praying um, for the services. Brother Roy went real good Monday afternoon. I know some of y'all are here. And, and uh, some I had to watch it later or something uh, went really good. And then they had the burial over at the uh, Veterans Cemetery over in Swannanoa. And uh, we went over there yesterday with the family. And boy, you talk about cold now. It's 10 degrees in Asheville yesterday morning. Chill factor was. And it felt like zero. We, you know, Swannanoa, that's the coldest place in the world. 
um, when that, that wind comes down through them mountains and it's snowing uh, all over the place. And, um, and it was sad. And I emphasized to them, you know, because I've heard people, you know, those songs, when they lay my body in the cold, cold ground. I said, that's not him. Uh, that's not him. They didn't put your mama in the cold, cold ground. Uh, mama's in heaven with the Lord. She's saved. Amen. And uh, this old body just goes right back to the dirt where it came from. And uh, one day it'll resurrect. But anyway, uh, we hope that uh, y'all continue to pray for them. I just remember pray for us. Steve, Steve had a hard time. He, they think he had a kidney stone or maybe even gallstones, right? And he's been to the doctor and that's a lot. That's painful, buddy. You, uh, you're going to get shot with a 38 in the, in the side or have a kidney stone. About the same thing. Uh, so uh, pray for him that he'll he'll be okay. Uh, that the Lord will help him get through this thing and get rid of that thing and others. Um, maybe one sickness or another, I don't know. I had some other folks uh, uh, feeling a little under the weather. Let's pray for them. Let's ask the Lord just to bless and his will be done. If you got something you want to pray for tonight, let's do that right now. And then you got to remember people, it's cold, backslid. I'm not talking about literally, physically, physically, backslid on God. Pray for them too. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads and our hearts before you this evening, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to come to you in prayer. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you for your blessings on our lives. All the many, many, many things that you've given us that we have not, do not deserve. Our Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come to church tonight. I ask you, Lord, that you would forgive us of all of our sins, everything we've said, everything we've done wrong. God, or out of the will of God, we pray that you'll forgive us. We do pray for all those that are sick, not able to be here, traveling, had to work, one thing or another. I pray, Lord, that you bless them. They're out of town. Uh, uh, maybe had to work tonight, Lord, and wanted to be here but couldn't. I pray, God, for uh, Brother Steve, Lord, especially that you'd touch him. Lord, help him to get over this thing, Lord, get rid of it. And, Lord, uh, be able to be back at church, back at work, whatever he needs to do. Lord, I pray for all these special needs. You saw the hands that were lifted up tonight. I pray, God, that you'd bless every single one of them. Lord, I pray that you bless the kids in their class tonight, Lord, and give them something special and real. God, I ask you, Lord, that you'd bless us as we get ready for a youth rally coming up here in a few few weeks, Lord, and Easter and all the other many, many special things, God, that be going on here in the next little while. I pray, God, that you'd keep the doors of Shining Light Baptist Church open. Keep that bubble of protection over us, Lord. Keep uh, sickness out of here, Lord. I pray the Holy Ghost of God will touch us, Lord, and heal us according to your will and glory. Have you in our hearts this evening. Do what ought to be done. We'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. All right. A couple things right quick now. Uh, uh, we want to uh, remember now we're going visiting Saturday morning. So uh, come and go with us Saturday morning, 930. We have visits to make all the bus routes. That's that's one kind of visiting. And then we do another, what I call pastoral visiting. And then you just go knocking on doors. It's all three types of visitation. So that'll be uh, Saturday morning at 930. Don't forget that. Uh, we'll go. Then Sunday morning, 1030, uh, 1030 schedule. So uh, don't forget that also uh, tonight. Now, um, I something else I was going to tell you, and I forgot. Or maybe I'll think about it in a minute. But I hope everybody's having a good week. If you are, say amen. If you're able to get out, you're having a good week. If you're able to breathe and eat and sleep, God's been mighty good to you. That's right. You're a rich person. If you're able to walk and talk and eat and sleep, you know these millionaires in Hollywood that give a million dollars so they could have an appetite? You know that, right? So uh, you're better off than they are in a lot of ways. So let's enjoy the Lord tonight. Uh, kids, you're not ready to go yet. We're going to have a little time fellowship first. At a distance, everybody be friendly. Let's stand, be friendly in the Lord. Everybody. <laughs> Thank you.
come on, ushers. Let's remain standing, everybody. Ushers, come on right quick. Uh, let's all, if you're ready to give tonight, honor the Lord. He'll bless you for it. Um, I meant to mention a minute ago, a uh, man, uh, I've known years ago down in Charlotte, as I had a stroke. He's in his late 50s, Dewey. I can't even remember his last name, but he used to go to church at Plaza Road Baptist down there where we'd meet him. And uh, I talked to uh, Brother Randy a while ago, and he said to pray for him. It's very serious. And then I got a... Uh, um, uh, card from Brother Jeremy. He's out driving a truck. His granddad passed away last week, and they sent us a thank you card. Uh, knowing about him, right? Him being in heaven, uh, Joyce Parker, and uh, thank the Lord for that. And uh, here's uh, the thing for the Roy. If anybody wanted to see it, one of his uh, cards here. Brother Roy served 20 years in the military in the uh, Air Force. 20 years. And they said he was, he was going to stay in four more, but they was going to make one of his daughters go to, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know, uh, Korea or somewhere to go to school. And they said, no, we can't, we're not going to send our girls off like that. So he just got out at 20. But anyway, um, if anybody wants to see that, that'll be there too. Okay. All right. I hope you'll give this evening the honor of the Lord. Do right. And he'll bless you for it. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege of giving. It's an honor. We thank you for it. We pray now for Dewey down yonder in Charlotte, Lord, that you touch him, heal him, Lord, help him to get over that sickness, whatever it is, a stroke and, and the other complications that he may have had. We do pray for our country, Lord, for our leaders. God, that you'd give them enough sense to know what to do and, and enough uh, guts to do it, Lord. We're in bad shape. God, we need revival. I pray for every preacher, every pastor, every missionary, every evangelist, anybody doing anything for you, Lord. Strengthen them. Give us a burden for you. Uh, uh, your work, Lord, like we've never had before. Bless this church. Keep the doors open till Jesus comes. Bless this offering. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody get All right, kids, you can go. You can go now. Let's get our Bibles open now. I hope you brought it because you're going to need it. Get your Bibles open tonight. I'm going to do something I very, 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 very seldom do. I like to try to keep something that everybody can keep up with and get something out of. And uh, the last thing that I'd ever want to do as a preacher is be boring. Well, I ain't, maybe not the last thing. Last thing I want to do is lead you astray. But the next to the last thing is be boring. I uh, can't. Okay, uh, I don't want to take something as exciting as the Bible and make it boring. A man one time said, uh, he came up to a preacher this years ago and all the preachers talked preached about going to movies and stuff. And uh, now they all got home and on their phones and everything. But he came up to a preacher and said, uh, he said, how come more people go to the movies than go to church? And the preacher said, because the movies do a great job you got to hand it to them. They do a good job of making fake look real. They can have you crying, screaming, jumping up and down, laughing and everything, and it's all fake. They do a good job of making fake look real. And he said, church is doing a good job of making real look fake. We're the ones got something to jump up and down and shout about. But we do a good job of making it look fake sometimes. And I won't do that. I don't want to be boring. I can't stand boring preacher. I can't stand to listen to a preacher preach 
who don't even, sounds like he don't even believe what he's saying. If he don't believe it, he sure ain't going to get nobody else to, ain't that right? There's a man used to come in here, a preacher preached one time, an old-fashioned, and he, he claimed being an atheist. And they asked him one time, he said, he said, why do you come hear me preach all the time? You don't believe nothing I say. And he said, because you do. <laughs> you do. And people like to hear somebody believe what they believe what they say. Now, tonight, at the risk of maybe being a little slower than normal, I want us to go on a little journey here through the Bible. Get your Bibles out. If somebody beside you does not have one, get your Bible. Share with them. We got one or two laying up here on the front. We usually have two or three in my office stacked up in there if somebody needs one. Um, but uh, we're going to look at the Bible. And here's what I want to do tonight. I want to, I want to, last week we talked about our, our Bible and how the history of our King James Bible. And I want to show you how that the King James Bible, unknowing, to the average person out here in public, this is just another one of them ways where we know it's God's preserved word has permeated the thoughts, the attitude, and the English language of this country and around the world. So what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to take some sayings and phrases that people frequently use and most of the time don't even know why they say them and show you where they come from, out of the Bible. Uh, the Bible still determines everything. The Bible still runs the world. The King James Bible runs the world. And if you go against it, you'll be sorry. I guarantee it. Let's take our Bible. Are you looking for uh, the, the offering? Jim stole it. Uh, Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. I have no idea. No idea. Uh, uh, Acts chapter 17, look at it here, we'll start here tonight, and um, I've heard people say all of my life, and you have too, they'll say, oh my goodness, they just come in here and they turn the world upside down. You know where that come from? That's not just an old country saying that country people figured up. It's in Acts chapter 17 and verse 6, look at it. Now we're going to go fast, so if you don't keep up with me, we're going to have to run off and leave you now, because we, we ain't got all night. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. There's where it comes from. You might want to mark that in your Bible. Why people on TV say that? They don't even know why they're saying it. Okay? Let's go. Let's go. Take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 6. Back to your left just a little bit. I want to hear them pages now. Luke chapter number 6. And uh, the first one to get there. Wins the first prize award. Luke chapter 6. That means you get bragged on. You, you did good. Uh, Luke chapter 6. And look at uh, verse 39. Look at Luke 6, 39. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? You see that blind lead the blind? That's all over the country. That's in books. That's in movies. That's in theaters. That. You know, they, they, when you hear on TV and the news will be talking, they'll say, when somebody didn't know it, boy, that's a blind leading the blind right there. And they're quoting scripture and don't even know it. That means the heart and the conscience and the mind of the unbelievers in this country still have to go by that book. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Now, we're just getting started, so keep, keep let's go. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, take your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 4. This is a story of, um, of uh, uh, Cain and Abel. When uh, Abel, Cain killed Abel, look at Genesis 4, 9. And uh, look at Genesis 4, 9. Are y'all cold? Is it too cold in here? It gets hot really quick when, when the lights come on. I'll bump it just a tad. Look at Genesis uh, 4, and I believe it's verse 9. And it says this. Down at the bottom, he said, am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? You know, they say that all the time. They say that in court. They say that in movies. They say that in, uh, well, who is that? Am I my brother's keeper? Uh, that's where it comes from, right out of the old book. Well, let's go. Look at Daniel chapter 5. 
Look at that. Now, you hear this in movies. You hear them. They say it in court. They say it in storytelling. When people are telling stories in books and magazines, they'll say, you know what? They seen all this bad stuff happening. That was the handwriting on the wall. Isn't that a weird thing to say? That's, I mean, think about it. If you'd never heard that before and you said uh, bad times are coming and somebody said that's handwriting on the wall, you said, what? Somebody's going to write on the wall. What's that got to do with a storm coming? You see, we it's ingrained in us, and we don't even know why. We don't even understand why. Daniel 5, sure enough, look at Daniel 5, 5, and the book said this, in the same hour came forth fingers, that's God's fingers, of a man's hand, he's got a hand, and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that was written, that, that wrote. Now, hold your finger there, so we're not leaving that yet. So uh, I've, I've heard them say, uh, they'll say in, uh, in court or something, they'll say, now look, ma'am, you knew when that guy come over here and you and him were supposed to be divorced and you knew bad things were going to happen, he called and threatened you, he called and told didn't you see the handwriting on the wall? Hadn't you heard people talk like that? Didn't you see the handwriting on the wall? There it is. People don't believe the Bible. Quote it all week, all day, every day. Am I my brother's keeper? I hand, blind lead the blind. I, I'm glad I know where it come from. And I'm glad I know what the Bible said. But look, we ain't through in Daniel chapter 5 yet. Have you ever heard anybody say, he got so scared his knees knocked? Look at verse 6. <laughs> look at verse 6. Ain't this crazy? Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. That ain't just on the Three Stooges, brother, or in cartoon. Here's the king. Look, buddy, if you was about half drunk and I had a party one night and there's a, a hand started writing on the wall, you go, bum, 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 bum. I mean, you'd be doing like Elvis there for long. Uh, I mean, you, he's, he got so scared, his knees not. Why would we think that? Why would we think? Now, if that wasn't in the Bible, I guarantee you people would never say that. You would never say somebody's terrified and their knees started knocking on each other. You wouldn't say that. You're not something. I, maybe, maybe I don't grab you like it grabs me. But I start thinking, man, it's in our culture. It's in our society, everywhere, and they don't even realize. People quote the Bible all the time and claim they don't even believe it. Amen? It's like people that take a Christmas bonus that don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> yeah, hypocrites. They talk about hypocrites in the church. Come on, the biggest hypocrites in the world. Amen? Uh, if you don't believe in him, don't take money in his name. All right, let's get another in here. Uh, look at Matthew chapter 7. Over to the right from Daniel, first book in the New Testament, Daniel chapter 7. It's good for you to learn how to flip back and forth in your Bible like that. Follow along. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6. We'll just go through these while. Look, I got 50 of these. We won't do them all, but I mean, there's, they say there's a thousand in the Bible, possibly. I don't know that. Uh, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6. Here's another one people say all the time. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearl before swine, lest they trample them under your feet, their feet and turn again and rend you. Now from time and memoriam, that's, that's been passed down from generation to generation is to, the, to the meaning that you don't take something that's precious and just throw it uh, somewhere where this, who's going to devour it. Uh, that's not uh, the, the, the actual biblical meaning of that verse is pearls will be young converts and swine will be false teachers. Uh, I've heard people say, uh, we've been out street preaching. They say, oh, you're just cast your pearl for swine. That ain't what that means. You're supposed to go preach the gospel to every creature where they hear, where they forbear. They ain't no matter where they list or not. But uh, if people say that, oh, you just cast your pearls for the swine. Let's look in 1 Samuel. Let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 26. And uh, look at this scripture here tonight. Let's go. 1 Samuel 26. Get your Bibles going there. And uh, we'll look here at verse 21. Now, here's one that's in movies. Here's one that's in books, on songs, country music, rock music. Uh, 1 Samuel 26. 
and verse 21, verse 21, he said, uh, then said Saul, I've sinned. Return, my son. I will no more do thee harm because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. Man, that's put there in 16, 11 people. Don't that, now you got country music. I played the fool when I fell in love with you. You know, and crazy people making money off of it. Making money. I played the fool. As a matter of fact, there's power in that when they quote that scripture. They don't even realize it. Have you ever noticed on TV when they want to make a point, they'll say a cuss word like D use, they'll use damn or hell or God in a in a profane uh, sense and make a curse word out of it. Hold your finger there right there in that same chapter. First Samuel, look at chapter 26, verse 10. Here's another one. First Samuel 26, 10. David said, furthermore, as the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die. His day shall come. How many grandmas? How many people, preachers, tell, down there you said, okay, your day's going to come. His day will come. You just wait and see. Where did they get that? Right there, that verse. Verse 10. Um, look at verse 10. It said this. As the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die. Man, has that been used? I'd like to know how many times in old westerns and old movies and stuff, they said, okay, buddy, your day's going to come. And, and, and when you say that, you're supposed to be putting a fear in them of saying, I'm not going to get away with this forever. I'm going to face God one of these days, right? And... Uh, and you've heard that. You've heard that. Here we are in 2015. People still quoting that book in 1611. Hey, I got a little secret to let you in on. They don't do the NIV like that. There ain't no scripture from the NIV engraved on the monument in Washington, D.C. It's all the King James Bible. Every bit of it. Now look, you ready? We're not done Samuel yet. Back one chapter. 1 Samuel 25. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 25 and verse number 10. Here's one that was nowadays. Boy, you hear a lot about that nowadays, don't you? What, who, what nowadays? What in the world does that mean? Look at uh, 1 Samuel 25, 10. 25, 10. And Nabal answered David's servant and said, Who's David? Who's son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Nowadays. Nowadays. What a cool thing to say. Now they say, oh, they, a lot of people do that nowadays. You know what they mean? Like that's happening a lot in this time period that we live in nowadays. Nowadays. And everybody says that. You just grow up saying it. You grow up saying it. Your mom and dad said it. They said it. Their mom and dad said it. Their mom and dad said it. And it come out of the Bible. Oh, they, a lot of people do that nowadays. You saw oh, it's just an accident. All this stuff I'm showing y'all is an accident. He said the word of God's not bound and people that don't even believe it, quote it and don't even know where that come from. Look here. Let's go a little further. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. How many you ever heard this? Say, somebody said, where'd you hear that at? And they say, oh, a little bird told me. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 10. You've been listening to them little birds. You better get your heart right. Because they're demons. Birds are a picture of demons. Unclean birds are. The dove is a picture of the Holy Spirit, right? You know that. So the dove is a picture of the Holy Spirit. And a vulture and an owl and them are pictures of unclean spirits. Ever hateful and unclean bird. That's why old Alfred Hitchcock wrote that movie. Made that movie, The Birds. Did y'all ever see that? Lord have mercy. That was 100 years ago, and I still can't th stand to think about it. Some woman was out there in California in a little car, and just birds come flying. <laughs> you know, we, I, I remember I, I, just, I must have seen that when I was just a kid. When did that come out, like in the 60s or something? Oh, that's scary. It still is, is popular today, that bird movie. And that's a picture of demons. Alfred Hitchcock was hooked up. He was in touch with somebody. And it wasn't the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
I remember, oh, oh, didn't he have a show on one time or what was it? It was, I mean, all you could, I just remember his big fat little jaws here and it showed his, y'all remember that? Or something like that. Twilight, was that what it was, the Twilight Zone? Alfred Hitchcock presents. Man, I I we used to I used to watch some of that stuff when I was growing up. And I, but I remember thinking, in, oh man, there's something weird about this. Even that night gallery. Everybody wanted to watch night gallery when I was growing up. And it was Rod Serling or Sterling or whatever his name was. And he'd tell this story about a man coming to this town and he'd meet a woman, and that was his wife from another his past life or something, something. Some demonic, something like that. But this is where that comes from. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 20. Look at Ecclesiastes 10, 20. Curse not the king. It means you better watch what you say about people. No, not in thy thought. And curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice. And that which hath wings shall tell the matter. Whew. Little bird told me. Who? Who started that? I wonder who the first person was in Hollywood or somebody that said, how'd you find that out? Oh, a little bird told me. Isn't that something? I guarantee you they didn't know it was in the Bible. How, why would you think a bird told you? Why didn't you say, oh, a little puppy dog told me. You know, or my kitty cat told me. Uh, birds are dumber than dogs or cats. They said a bird of the air shall carry the voice. That means sometimes you can talk about somebody and the demon's listening to you and he'll go tell that person that you're talking about them. Whew. They ain't your friend, I can tell you that. They ain't your friend. Somebody want to say something about that right there? Y'all look, got you thinking now, eh? You know, they say them smart TVs. They say if you got a smart TV and all that, that they can look back at you and they know what you're saying. Everything you're saying, they're getting. If it can, if it can understand you saying Channel 33 football game, it can understand you saying blah, 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 blah. <laughs> hey, man, you better watch what you say, buddy. Somebody listening. I remember them old preachers used to preach said, one of these days they'll invent TVs where they can see you in your living room. And we thought, ah, it's a little far, but it, it's, it's true. It's true now. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's some spooky stuff there, boy. The, Hollywood's always been hooked up with demonic power. And that's why I believe this. I believe just about everything Hollywood puts out all this zombie stuff and everything, you're actually going to see that one day. But they have a distorted view of it. But somebody's telling, oh, oh, uh, what is that guy, Steven Spielberg? <laughs> and uh, that other guy's real does that stuff. There's another guy that writes a lot of that spooky. Stephen King? Wes Craven? Uh, them guys are hooked up to demons because they write stuff and it's sort of scriptural, but it's sort of, you know, like that bug-eyed maggot, E.T. That's what he was. That's what he was. He was not sweet and cute. If you think that was cute, you are a sick person. <laughs> he was not cute. You, there's something wrong with your head, buddy. Cute. Ain't that something? Yeah, really. You probably heard, it probably heard you. Hey, I've had more than one person tell me in here that they'd just be talking about something out of clear blue, like saddles for a horse, and then the next thing you know, it pops up on your phone. Advertising. Uh, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. yeah. So zombies, all this zombie stuff they're putting out now, that's a picture of something that's really going to take place. 
on this earth. They, it may be already, but it's distorted. Hollywood, Hollywood don't never get it right, but they get they they. I wish I could think of one right quick that they they'll they'll try to make. They couldn't make one right if they had to. Um, they can't make one biblical. People they say, "Oh, Hollywood put out a movie on the Bible." Don't hold your breath. It'll be messed up somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I never saw none of them. Anything that happened after I got saved, and I never saw many of them. Is that Arnold Schwarzenegger? I've heard him talk about the Terminator every all thirty years, but I never did. I never did watch none of them. Um, I remember we used to watch um, King Kong every year, and there's more of that than meets the eye. Oh, King Kong, the monster, Beauty and the Beast. There were giants on the earth in those days. I'm telling you, it's all. It's always. It's always a monster and some woman. <laughs> I can't, you know, with underwear on. Always, every all the movies, it's never a big demon woman with a poor man. Oh, never, never. It's sons of God, daughters of men. Every time. Every time. <laughs> every time. Frankenstein, same thing. Electrical charge hooked up to him. Bzz. He's half human, he's half machine, he's half demon. So, oh, Dr. Frankenstein, all that stuff comes right out of your Bible. It's all right out of your Bible. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, Herman Munster. Now, they was, they was a little cuter. The Munsters was a little, they was funny. We used to watch the Munsters. I remember a... <laughs> I, they never did scare me. That's they had them, uh, that ugly little boy they had, Be, Eddie and Betty, or something. I never did think much of that, but they would. There was a picture of that they, witchcraft and stuff. <laughs> I forgot about the monsters. Their music. I can't there. The music went. Dang. Huh? How their music? I tell you. Adams family. The Adams family, yeah. Now we all remember the Adams family, right? Ain't that funny that they named him Adam? And boy, his wife, whoo, she is a dilly. I'm telling you. All right, let's go. Let's go. We've got a long way to go, but uh, we won't get to all these tonight. But look at this. Little bird told me you better watch out for that kind of stuff. Better watch out who you talk to, what you say, who you text, what you watch in private. Because the Lord's writing it all down. I tell you, somebody else is looking at the devil. And he knows your weakness and he can set you up to mess your life up. This is more real than what we think. The spiritual realm that we can't see is just as real as this physical realm that we can see. You just can't see it with these natural eyes. All right, take your Bible. Let's go on over to uh, Luke again. Luke chapter number... 12. These are not in order, obviously. I'm having to go back and forth. Luke chapter number 12. Let's do a, let's do a couple more here before it starts running. We'll start running out of time. Luke chapter number 12. Um, here's one everybody in the United States knows and quotes, and I bet you they ain't 5% of them knows where it comes from. No, I bet you they ain't 3% knows where it comes from. Luke chapter 12, in verse 19, when the guy had everything he wanted. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Ain't that something? Right there it is. Eat, drink, and be merry. How come I don't just say, Man, I'm going to fix me a big feast and, and get drunk and live it up? No. Eat, drink, and be merry. They say it on the news. If you'll listen, then people on the news, most of them you can't hardly really stand them, but they are educated. And lawyers are especially. And all those politicians and stuff, them people's educated. And they've done a lot of studying. And they, they have this stuff ingrained in them in college. They don't even realize it. Eat, drink, and be merry. 
Live it up. Everybody, for tomorrow we die. That's the story here. Eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow you die. That's what happened to this guy. All right, let's do another one. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 65, way back in the Old Testament. You'll go back even before Daniel, where he was going to go, and before Jeremiah. We're at Isaiah chapter 65, and uh, here's a good one. This is a good one. This is one they use on TV all the time. Soap operas, movies, Isaiah 65, 5 which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Oh my goodness, holier than thou. Ham, if, I, if we had a dollar for every time that was said on TV, oh, these politicians, they come in here with their holier than thou attitude. Don't they say that all the time? They don't know where that comes from. Do you think, Kamala Harris reads Isaiah 65. I doubt it. Uh, do you think? Uh, do you think uh, uh, anybody that that works in the news media reads Isaiah 65? Do you think Joe Biden reads Isaiah 65? Oh my goodness! Uh, but they all know holier than thou. It's when they want to make a point, they quote it. They'll make a movie and if they want to scare people, end of the world, apocalypse. It's funny, they dis disregard it, hate it, don't want to live by it, but when they want to make a point, they, they'll quote it or swear by it. All right, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Uh, let's see, Luke chapter 2, back in Luke. And uh, Luke chapter 2 here, uh, look at verse number 14. Everybody knows this one. You hear it all the time. Will there ever be peace on earth? Will there ever going to be peace on earth? Peace on earth, goodwill to me. You know, uh, will it ever going to happen? Here's where it come from. Luke chapter 2 and verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Hey, you know how come there ain't been no peace on earth yet? Because there ain't been no glory to God in the highest. <laughs> when there's glory to God in the highest, there will be peace on earth. You know, old Elvis said, saying, there will be peace in the valley for me someday. Uh, and that ain't talking about, talking about going through when you die, going through the valley of death. And I hope there was, bless his heart. It didn't look too good for him. But uh, uh, peace on earth, talking about no war, everybody getting along with each other. And it said that won't happen until there's glory to God in the highest. And that won't happen until Jesus comes in the millennium and sets up his throne literally for a thousand years and there will be peace on this earth. It's not spiritual. The Catholic Church spiritualizes it. The, the Mormon Church spiritualizes it. The Witness Church spiritualizes it. The Methodist Church spiritualizes it. Uh, the Presbyterian Church, I think, spiritualizes it. They all say, well, that just means peace in our hearts. No, no. no. There will be literal peace peace on earth for the first time since Cain knocked Abel's brains out when the Prince of Peace comes and sits on that throne and makes it. Anybody got a comment right quick? All right, let's get another one or two here. Let's get another one or two. We're about, we ain't got much time left here. Uh, good night, I'm skipping a lot here. I'm skipping a lot. I'm skipping something like Thief in the Night. I'm skipping the Letter of the Law. I'm skipping A House Divided Against Itself. I'm skipping The Love of Money. Uh, let's, let's do another one here in Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. And uh, here's one that oh, people say, now, our, I, I will admit our modern generation is, is not quoting these terms as much as people used to because we quit reading the Bible and we let hip-hop TV dictate to us how to talk now. And that's a shame. That's a shame. That's sad. Our, our, this new generation coming up don't have, know a lot of these sayings. But look at this one. Isaiah 40, verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the eyes of a very little thing. Look at that. A drop in the bucket. How I many of you heard that all your life? Why, well, he ain't a drop in the bucket to what's coming. That ain't a drop in the bucket to the snow we're going to get next week. The drop of a bucket. Isn't that an unusual thing to say? A drop of a bucket? Why would people go around saying it? And yet people say it 
still to this day. Drop the bucket. <laughs> what in the world that got to do with anything, huh? All your life. You say, you think that's bad. That ain't a drop in a bucket what you're going to get next time, boy, if you do that again. You know, that's how we do <laughs> And, and uh, um, that's, that's it. That's where the scripture is. All right, let's, let's go. Let's go here. Uh, Matthew chapter 7. Let's get another or two here. Matthew chapter 7. I'm making you turn to a lot of scripture tonight, and this is definitely good for you. You're exercising your senses to discern both good and evil. That's what we're doing tonight. You're exercising your senses. Matthew chapter 7, and look at verse number 15. Here's one everybody in the country knows, and nobody knows where it comes from. Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But in really, there are raven and wolves. And the old saying is what? Sheep and wolves clothing. Wolf in sheep's clothing. That's what I am. I'm a sheep in wolves clothing. I'm rough and big and sound like I'll bite you, but really I'm a sheep in my heart. But there you have wolves in sheep's clothing. That means, boy, I mean, I, that's such a vivid illustration. The wolf and the sheep. The wolf and the sheep. The wolf and the sheep. The wolf tries to catch a sheep. Isn't it funny how the Lord used those timeless illustrations that went con, con, uh, that that is not restricted to just one time in history, but is true throughout all time and all ages. Sheep, wolves in sheep's clothing. So a wolf comes up and he's got on sheep's clothing. Why? So the other sheep will what? Think he's a sheep. Man, if I don't nail it, I don't know what does. False prophets, all the fake preachers on TV, the uh, them that turned out to be hypocrites and grabbed stole people's money and everything else. Wolf with sheep's clothing. That means you can't always go by how, how somebody sounds or even how they look. It could be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Well, let's get another. I'll skip apple of my eye, thorn in your side. Yeah, boy, he's just a thorn in my flesh. You know where that comes from. Fat of land, live off fat of land. Let's look at Galatians chapter 6. Let's get a couple more. Galatians chapter number 6. I'm thinking about next week, maybe us doing one on why we say what we say in our, our, our philosophy in this country. It's one reason, you know why God blessed America? Because America was built. America was built upon what the Bible says. And say, oh, we just looked up and found a nice piece of land. Look, Canada's hooked on to us and they ain't blessed. Mexico's hooked on to us and they ain't blessed. Why'd God just bless America? Because the men that founded America, for the most part, were Christians, and the rest, for the most part, were deists that had respect for God and the Bible and the right one, and our country was founded upon what this book says. That's why God's blessed America. All right, here, what did I say here? Uh, Galatians 6. Everybody knows this one. Judges quoted every day in court. Verse 7, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. How many mamas have stood at the door with a teenage girl running out to the yard and said, I'm going anyway. She said, all right, you'll reap what you sow. We've told them and told them and told them. And buddy, you do too. You'll never get around that. It's like a law. It's like a law. You see this? What's this law right here? Okay, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try it again. That's three out of three. I'm going to try it again. Four. If I've done that 10 million times, you know how many times it fall? 10 million. There's a law. The law of gravity is pulling that thing down. And that's the same thing. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. That ought to scare us. That ought to put a little fear in us to go out and do stupid stuff. Amen? That ought to put a little fear of God in us. Just before you do something, just remember, you sow it, you'll reap it. You say, oh, no, Brother Danny, God will forgive me. I didn't say God wouldn't forgive you. I said you still reap it. He'll go easy on you. He'll go easy on you. If you repent and get right, he'll go easy on you. But whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. That's a scary thing. Better think twice. 
Right, a hundred times. All right, let's get uh, another two right here. Uh, Job chapter 19. Let's go back to the Old Testament again, finish up. Job chapter number 19. And uh, we'll look at verse uh, Job 19. Is that what I said? Yeah, let's look at Job. Job 19, 20. Job 19, verse 20. My bone cleaved to my skin and my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Boy, he got out of here by the skin of his teeth. Honestly, that's a weird thing to say. His teeth don't have skin. I mean, I guess that enamel or whatever, that, that's what he's talking about. Who would say something like that? Who would say something like that? What if, if that wasn't in the Bible, and I just come up and say, man, that thing got out of here by the skin of his teeth. You say, what? And we all know what that means. It means he barely got out. He got out that much by, by the skin of his teeth. What a Bible verse, brother. Isn't that something? While, you, while you're back there, back on up to uh, Job chapter 3. Job chapter number 3. This one's a little obscure, but it's there. Job chapter number 3. It's a horse life. Job chapter 3. You'll see a horse life. Job 3, 9. Um, I think. No. No, I'm sorry. 39. Job 39. I looked at 3, 9. So I was, Job 39. My fault. Job 39 and verse 25. Uh, he's talking about to a horse in verse 18, 19, 20, 21. He's pawing in the valley. 22, mocks at fear. Then look at 25, the horse. He saith among the trumpets, ha ha. <laughs> he smelled the battle far off. Horse life. That was a little obscure. Uh, let's get it. Judges. And this will be the last one. Judges. Back to your left there a little bit. To the book of Judges. And look at this one. It's a strange. Judges is one of the strangest books in the Bible. I love the book of Judges. I'm, it just fascinates me. Uh, let's look at Judges chapter 4. When that girl was going to kill old, that old wicked man as a picture of the Antichrist. And, um, and uh, it's in verse, uh, let's see. Job 4.21. Job 4.21. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer, we're in Judges 4.21, and went softly unto him and smote the nails into his temple and fastened it to the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. Fast asleep. Well, I went in there and I looked, and she is laying there fast asleep. Now, somebody explain to me what... Why in the world, if you saw somebody asleep, you'd say it's fast? Huh? Oh, you mean going to sleep fast? Yeah, I mean, it might be meant that. Going to, but he was, so they said, boy, he's fast asleep. That's what we say. He is, present tense, fast asleep. Why would you say he's fast asleep? I'd say he's slow asleep. You know, if I was going to make an old saying, I'd say he's slow asleep. But who, that don't have a ring to it, does it? Fast asleep does. And all through the house, not a creature was staring, not even a mouse. And the kids are all, you know, and all they're all fast asleep. Isn't that something? I don't know if that does to you what it does to me, but to me, I'm just saying over and over that that book is a supernatural book. It's a supernatural book, y'all. That's why we ought to thrill to read it every day of our life. Let it guide you. You ain't going to go wrong trusting this book. Yeah, listen, don't you let these little smart alecks that have been to college four years just shake your faith in this book. Good night. They don't know. They're not even the first base yet. They're not. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. They're not even out of kindergarten if they don't fear God. All right. I'm going to stop right there and we'll take just a minute. Take your questions or comments. Uh, anybody right quick. 
Yeah, that's right. I had that wrote down. Yeah, she, I, she nailed it, buddy. Yes, sir, brother. It's a picture of the Antichrist. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, 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 yeah. Completely out. That's good. That's good, and and you're right because they say he fastened the door. Fastened the door. Why didn't he just slow the door? Why? Why? What's that got to do with speed? When somebody fastened the door, he fastened his shoe latchet or something. That means secure, I guess. Fast asleep, I guess, meant really asleep. I don't know if I've ever been fast asleep. Maybe a few times. I don't usually, I wish I could. I envy people. I envy you people who can just lay down and go sleep and then don't wake up the next morning. I, I, the only thing is, the house catches on fire. You've had it. But, man, I, I, I wake up 15, I can wake up. It's the weirdest thing. I can wake up at any time of the night. And I've tried myself, and I can tell you what time it is within 15 minutes. I'll get up, go to the bathroom, and i say, it's about 3.30, and it'll be 3.10 or something. I don't know why I'm like that. I'm just, something wrong with me. I'm, not, I'm, not, I wasn't, I'm never really asleep. I'm like this. F Frankie, every time, uh, I, I'll lay down and take a nap, and I'll hear him coming up the steps. And he'll open that door. And he comes walking around the room and I say, Frankie, and he just grins coming all the way around there. And I, I can't be mean to him. I say, what do you want? He'll want to wake me up from taking a nap. But anyway, fast sleep. That means you're out cold. Good. That's good for you. All right. We're going to stop right there. Uh, get in the book, y'all. Get in the book. There's, uh, there's uh, hundreds of them things like I showed you here tonight. I didn't even, I didn't even talk about uh, safe and sound. Gave him leave, like military leave. Beware of dogs. Old wives' fables. Half baked, knees knocked. I did that one. High time, my darling. Seeing eye to eye. Out of the frying pan in the fire. All that kind of stuff in the Bible. All right, let's stand. Hope you can get your appetite up. Getting the Word of God here now a little bit this week. And the Lord will bless you for it, okay? Amen. God bless you for coming. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll go. Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. Pray now that you bless every single person here tonight. Lord, thank you for this good time of Bible study we've had tonight. I pray we'd grow in grace and, and, and uh, strength and honor and wisdom for your glory. Have you in our hearts now. Bless everybody as they travel home. Meet back with us Sunday. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless y'all.